A very wonderful morning to my esteemed listener. I am Yemi Grisman Aduloju, lead pastor, Lighthouse International Christian Center, Samanda UI Road, Ibadan, Nigeria, welcoming you to today's edition of our program, Daily Impact. Let me share with my listener this morning one vital word on Mabon. I have titled this sharing Words on Mabon. Listen to this. The happiest place to be is in someone else's thoughts, and the safest place to be is in someone else's prayers. The happiest place to be is to be in someone's thought. You are very happy when someone remembers you. When your birthday is remembered by a friend or a loved one, you are happy. Oh, so I am in your thought. When people say, I am thinking about you, you are happy because they have not forgotten you. Many people have been forgotten and they have no one to think about them. Oh, how happy you are that someone thinks about you. So the happiest place to be is in someone else's thoughts. But listen, the safest place to be is in someone else's prayers. When people pray for you, it is better to be in people's prayers than to be in people's thoughts. It is good, don't forget, and mark my words, to be in people's thoughts is okay if you are happy, but it is much better to be in people's prayers. So don't ever forget, the happiest place to be is in someone else's thoughts, and the safest place to be is in someone else's prayers. In the book of Job, chapter number 42, and in verse number 10, the Bible says, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Job's friends came to sympathize with him in his trouble. They, there was a back and forth argument about the rightness or wrongness of Job. Job maintained how right he was, and his friends insisted that Job was wrong. And as long as this back and forth argument continued, there was no headway. Job continued in his problem, in his sickness, in predicament, and his friends also in their situations. But when Job changed and he began to pray for his friends, he was in their thoughts, but Job had them in his prayers. Job prayed for them. And imagine what happened. Job prayed for his friend, but God turned around the captivity of Job. God restored Job's losses simply because he prayed for his friends. So the happiest place to be is in people's thoughts, but the safest place to be is in their prayers. And the man who prays also receives the blessings of God over his life and over his destiny. Do not forget the point we are making. The happiest place to be is in someone else's thoughts, but the safest place to be is in someone else's prayers. For these, let's look at what the scripture says in the book of Luke chapter 22 verses 31 and 32. Luke 22, 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. When you are converted, then strengthen your brethren. Peter was not only in Jesus' thoughts, Peter was in his prayers. Jesus prayed for Peter. And this was what made the difference between the outcome or in the outcome of Peter and Judas Iscariot. Judas was also in Jesus' thoughts, but he was never in his prayers. I guess we do not see any record of the place where Jesus prayed for Judas or where he said, I have prayed for you. But it is recorded here that Jesus prayed for Peter. So Peter was in his prayers. And don't forget, that is the safest place to be. Peter was saved. Despite the fact that he denied his master three times, he was saved because he was in Jesus' prayers. Keep your loved ones in your prayers. And we are also trusting that you will be in people's prayers. Be in the prayers of your father, your mother, your aunt, your uncle, your friend. When you are in someone else's prayer, when people pray for you, it is the safest place to be. Don't forget, I repeat, Peter was saved. Despite his denials of his Lord, 
because it was in Jesus' prayers, not only in his thoughts, but also in his prayers. The devil or Satan sought to have Peter, that, or Simon rather, that he may sift him as wheat. But Jesus said, I have prayed for you. So it was the prayer of Jesus that ultimately restored Peter. It wasn't anything else. And so put people in your prayers. It is very important. And also be in someone else's prayers. It is my prayer that the Lord will raise genuine intercessors, men and women, who will pray for you. It is also my prayer that the Lord will make you an intercessor, someone to stand in the gap for people also. I am praying that the Lord will strengthen you, encourage you, empower you to us maintain a prayer altar and pray for people and of course pray for yourself. Your altar of prayer is very important. It is the altar of change, the altar of transformation. That is the place where destinies are changed, destinies are transformed, where change will call in a man's life. Don't forget in First Chronicles chapter 4 and in verse number 9 and in verse number 10, the Bible says, Now Jabesh was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabesh, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And verse 10 says, And Jabesh called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. May God grant you whatever you request from him in the precious name of Jesus. Jabesh raised an altar of prayers and it brought about a turned around to his situation. Don't forget, Isaac entreated the Lord. Isaac entreated the Lord for Rebekah, his wife. The Bible says God had his entreaty and Rebekah became pregnant. You also need to raise an altar of prayer for someone, someone you love. So don't forget, the safest place to be is in someone's prayer. And so the safest place you can keep your loved ones is in your prayers. You don't have to be agitated or stressed or, or fret over a son, over a daughter who is in another place. You need to put that person in your prayer. Raise a prayer altar. Let that person be in your prayers. That is the safest place the person can be. Not in your worries. There is nothing that worry does than to give you anxiety and stress and high blood pressure. Worry does not solve any problems. It creates more problems. So why worry? Instead of worrying, raise an altar of prayers. It is the safest place anybody could be. Imagine that Jesus did not pray for Simon. Imagine that Simon was not in Jesus' prayers. The enemy would have had his way in Simon Peter's life. The enemy's will, the devil's will, would have prevailed against Peter. But Jesus prayed for him. Jesus had him in his prayers. And Peter, or Simon rather, was saved. May you be in the prayers of Jesus Christ and of loved ones also. And of course, that is what Jesus does now. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercessions for them. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jesus lives to make intercession for us. And it is my prayer that the Lord Jesus will pray for you and you will not be delivered to the will of your enemies. The devil desired Peter. But Jesus' prayers wouldn't let that happen. Again, I pray that the Lord will not cause you to be delivered to the will of your enemies, that Jesus will pray for you. But don't forget also to do like Job. Pray for your friends. Pray for loved ones. And God will turn about your captivity and God will restore you. It shall be well with you. Let us pray. I'd like you to lift up your voice and pray. I say, Father, make me a channel of blessings to others, to people, as I bend my knees to pray. Make me a blessing to people around me, not only my family, but to people around me. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing to people in the name of Jesus. This is my prayer, O oh God, that you will make me a blessing to others around me. In the name of Jesus, I'd like you to lift up your voice and pray and say, Father, make my prayer altar an altar of transformation, altar of change, change in my personal life, change in the lives of the people that I pray for. 
Father, this is my prayer, that you will make my prayer altar, an altar of change and transformation in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray and say, Jesus, don't leave me alone. Don't deliver me to the will of my enemies. Pray for me, Jesus. Pray for me, O oh God. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will not deliver me to the will of my enemies, that you will pray for me. Jesus, pray for me. You prayed for Peter. Pray for me also in the name of Jesus. I am saved in your prayers. I am saved. Jesus, pray for me in Jesus' precious name. I'd like you to lift up your voice again and repeat that prayer. Father, let me not be delivered to the will of my enemies. Let every attempt of the enemy concerning me fail totally in the name of Jesus. Let the request of the enemies fail. Let the request of the accuser fail. Let your name be glorified. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will not deliver me to the will of my enemies. The Lord, you will cause the will of the enemies concerning me to fail. The accuser will fail in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father, in Jesus precious name. I'd like you to receive the blessings of the Lord this week. Jabesh prayed and said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Father, bless me indeed this week and make me a blessing to others. This is my prayer, O God. Bless me indeed this week and make me a blessing to others in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I pray that the Lord will bless you this week and beyond and we make you a blessing to others. I pray that Jesus will pray for you. He will not leave you alone. You will always be in his prayers as he lives to intercede for us in the name of Jesus. The counsel of the ungodly concerning your life, your children, your family will fail in the name of Jesus. I pray that as you pray for your children, for loved ones, God will hear and answer. I pray that your prayer altar will be the altar of transformation, the altar of change in the name of Jesus. I declare the blessings of the Lord upon you this week. God will bless you and bless your efforts. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I invite my esteemed listener to join us later today at 5.30 p.m. at the Light Cathedral for our in-depth and analytical teaching of God's Word. We call it Ezra Project. That's our Bible study. 5.30 p.m. You may wish to join this Bible study meeting on any of our social media platforms, on Facebook at LICCNG1, on Twitter at LICCNG, and on YouTube at Lighthouse International Christian Center. Forward this message and share the link with your contact. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on other social media platforms. My handle on all platforms is at Yemi Graceman. Until I come your way again tomorrow for another exciting edition of our program, I am Yemi Graceman at Duloju. Wishing you a very glorious day and the Lord bless you. I am free.